Hey guys, back again for 31 Days of Horror, and this is scary, not the movie, but the fact that I didn't have anything really ready again. So, um, but I did add a couple new things to the room here. You can see in the background I got those guns mounted over there, so I did that today. I found that I had some stuff to do that, so I think that's kind of cool. And I'm going to have more lights going because I've got the Triforce behind me over there. And I've got the clock set up. and But I figured I'm not going to turn on all the lights for this because it's supposed to be spooky kind of right. So just the dark, with the red lighting. But as you can see, I'm sitting down. I'm going to be a little lazier for this one. I got home from work and I'm a little exhausted. But I want to talk about Shredder because I did watch this not too long ago. And I've seen it at least a couple times now. And there is a girl, Jennifer Thompson, who introduced this movie to me because we used to watch a lot of horror movies together on Facebook, um, Facebook groups or whatever, and we'd watch stuff together. So a lot of cool. We watched so many. I don't know. Jason Takes Manhattan comes to mind. Just a ton of them. But anyways, this is how I found out about Shredder. And Shredder is a total 90s horror movie. That reminds me a lot of the movie Scream, but Scream is a lot more scarier in a sense than this. Uh, but this uh, is really cool, and it's different, and it's unique, and it, and it is corny, and you think that it would be corny, but let me say what it is, okay? It's a slasher movie that's based on kind of snowboarding, and that's why it's called Shredder. <laughs> It's Shredder, like shredding the snow, you know. Um, so this is during the extreme sports craze in the 90s. It was all about, you know, skateboarding and snowboarding and bikes and, you know, BMX and all that stuff. And it just reminds me so much of being a teenager. It's crazy I didn't see this movie when I was a teenager. I don't know what I would have thought of it then, but this reminds me of those years, and I love it. It's not really scary, but there's a lot of cool kill scenes in it. And there are twists, and that's one of the things I think that kind of reminds me of Scream, is it guess, it makes you guess, you know, for one, because it's 90s, but also because it makes you guess uh, who the killer is. Maybe I shouldn't say 90s. Maybe it's like in the 2000s. Maybe the early 2000s. So just forget about everything I said, okay? It's 2001 is what it says. But I guess late 90s, whatever. I, I get those mixed sometimes. But 2001, so it's right there at the 2000. Ugh. Anyway, see, there's no preparation or anything. But th this, I, I'm blessed to have this Blu-ray of this movie. It came with a really cool slip cover, which is what he's holding on to. And it came with a poster that I put up there. It's up above the shelves. It's a kind of smaller poster, but... It's pretty cool. It's got it's the cover of this Blu-ray, and I'll show you that. It's got the killer, the icicle, and the axe. It's got the snowboarders. I mean, it's really cool, colorful art. Um, that's what the poster is. So, um, yeah. So you see as how the killer kind of has the ski mask on and everything, like or the you know the glasses or whatever goggles. So you can't see who it is, but it introduces you to these characters. It's kind of like Cabin Fever, where I said it's kind of the horror cliche, where a bunch of kids get together in a cabin to spend you know, time together. And that's what this is. And basically, like, people start dying. And uh, there's, like, a sheriff that's involved, just like in Cabin Fever, just like in so many movies. And it makes you wonder if it's the cop, but it's not. He ends up dying, and I want to... I'm going to give spoilers, but let's just talk about some of the kills that I can remember. Uh, I know one of the first kills that it starts off with, we see a snowboarder, I think, um, get killed by, like, some razor wire. That, or, like, some... There's, like, a wire... Like, he's snowboarding down a hill, and there's, like, wires that, like, cut him up. He runs into these sharp wires. And it basically decapitates the person. And... Um, there's a lot of, like, punk rock kind of music in this, so that also reminds me of that era when I was a teenager, just the soundtrack of this. And I think somebody might get stabbed with an icicle, like it shows. Um, you know, 
somebody gets like hung from like the ski lift and like after they die you see them later on just kind of go by in the background like on the ski lift and they're wondering like where that person is they're trying to find her i think it's one of the girls there are a couple at least a couple of girls in this that are pretty beautiful and there's a lot of sexy kind of scenes and there might be a little bit of nudity but you know it's a lot of teenage stuff like they're playing truth or dare or you know just kissing and stuff like that it shows them in skimpy clothing you know whether whether or not there's a little bit of nudity let me go ahead and read what the back of this says it says horror hits the slopes in this slasher cult classic about a gang of snowboarders on a one-way chairlift to terror Lindsay McKeon, Saved by the Bell, the new class. Scott Winger, I don't know how that's pronounced, but Fuller House and Aladdin. And Brad Hawkins from Boyhood. I didn't really recognize any of these people. Star in the scare-filled, laugh-packed weekend of horror as a homicidal maniac with a grudge against snowboarders turns a snowy getaway into a body count nightmare. When seven hot-blooded co-eds break into a Abandoned ski lodge, soon the wild party turns into a desperate fight for survival, and it isn't long before they discover that on the slopes, no one can hear you scream. I love how they just go full bore with this snowboarder theme. Um, basically, just to cut to the chase of who the killer is, I don't really exactly remember, but he's like one of the town people guy. I don't remember how he, he's relation to the story, but I think that his daughter died. Um, by some kind of snowboard accident or something. And one of the guys, and she was with like a few guys, and one of the guys that she was with, they, they none of them like got caught or something, but one of the guys that she was with was is one of the guys that's with the kids. Um, and he might not be part of the original group. Maybe he kind of joins them randomly, and they find out that he was involved in that or something. Anyways, but this guy whose daughter died, he's basically obsessed with hating snowboarders. And um, they find later on a shack <coughs> that has, like, all these newspaper clippings about the day that she died. And her body, like, frozen, like, intact there. Like, he, he kept her body and, like, he's went crazy. And, um, but there's other twists because there's, like, another girl. I don't know if it's, like, his daughter, another daughter, or somebody else i know i'm getting a lot of things confused but there's like multiple killers kind of or maybe there was one all along and somebody gets mistaken for a killer i, I don't really remember but yeah there's plot twists but it's really good it is um for what it is you know don't expect the shining out of this um but i was thinking that it's one of the coolest horror movies that you know there's a lot of cool ones and I'd kind of compare it to to Idle Hands because Idle Hands is one of my favorites. They're completely different, but it definitely has that teenage feel and uh, really unique, really good. I was thinking that you know this might even beat Cabin Fever with how cool it is, even though I love Cabin Fever a lot. And uh, they're different, but I'm just thinking like the coolness factor. I think it's it's cooler than the Mangler, and again, it's different. Is definitely not like a grade A movie like The Shining, and it's nothing like Cold Fish. And uh, you know, I'm just thinking of all the movies that I've reviewed so far in this. But it definitely needs to be mentioned because I think more people need to know about it. Because I've been a horror buff for a long time. You know, in the past, I've known about so many horror movies I never once heard of this. I'll show you some pictures of the back on the back of this too. It just shows like. The girl, one of the girls there, and the killer with an axe. And they're on the, uh, just sitting in the snow there. It's overall, it's a really good movie. If you're into whodunits and you like this kind of stuff. I don't think that it's really gory or bloody with the kills. I think there might be some blood. I don't really, you know, maybe I'm forgetting some things. I don't think that it's really, really gruesome. But it's just, you know, you see these little death scenes and they incorporate snowboard stuff in some kind of way. And uh, I 
but it's a really cool ride along the way. Um, I think the twist is that one of the other girls that's the killer too, she might be this foreign girl that's not a part of the kids group, but like the guy, one of the guys has a crush on her. And man, I just, I need to remember the plot. There's some stuff on the inside here too. It shows a picture of one of the, the corpses. It looks like this could be a reverse. Um, this is a reverse slip cover. I didn't notice that. I'll show you. See, this is the other side. Death to snowboarders. So it's got some of the kids there. And this is an alternate back that has, there's the corpse. Um, I don't think that's the corpse of his daughter. I think that's like another corpse that he kept, that he killed or something. But yeah, pretty much almost all of the um, kids get killed. There's a girl who I guess is a supposed to be like a lesbian. I don't know if that really shows lesbian scenes or if she has a girlfriend there, but uh, one of the guys has a crush on her, and those two people are basically the last ones that survive. And I think they end up getting together or something like so. Uh, but yeah, those are the those are the only two that end up living. Um, one of the, I mean they're they're like partiers and they're like some of them are like stoners or they drink or whatever like they act so stupid but one of the kids like records everything like he's recording you know all the snowboarding and catching all the cool stuff on camera and um, I think that he dies by um, like one of the ski things uh, that you use to ski I don't know what they're called um, but the sticks that you use. I think that the killer shoves that like through the camera lens, like through his eye, like through his head, and like blood. Then like blood like sprays out of the camera. So that's that's one of the bloodier ones. But I did remember that. So there's some unique kills there, some unique ones. Um, but yeah, I could watch this movie over and over again. I'm really glad that I I found this and. Um, was introduced to this. I don't know who put out this Blu-ray, if it was, it just says Scorpion. So it's not Arrow or, it's not Shout Factory. It says Scorpion releasing. So that must be who put out this Blu-ray. It's nice, I mean, with the really nice slipcover and the poster that it came with. Give me that. But yeah, this movie's a treat, so you should check it out. Shredder, you won't be disappointed if you are halfway interested in the things that I said that it's about. If you like Scream, I think you would enjoy this. That's going to be it, guys. So that's number eight, and we'll see what happens next. Sayonara.